what's up with the, the Texas culture, right? It's a buzzword. Everyone wants to talk about Texas and culture and where it's at. It's this, it's that. Everyone's got an opinion. That's fine. But I think this Texas quarterback situation is very unique in the sense of where it's arriving and where Texas sits right now in 2023 and what's ahead of them. So when it comes to Texas, everyone's asking the question, as soon as Quinn Ewers went down, can Texas still win the Big 12? Take it a step further, can Texas still make the college football playoff? Like, how long is Quinn Ewers out for? At the time of us being live, we don't have any reports as to Quinn Ewers and when he will be back. The report is that it's not season-ending. Steve Sarkeesian said yesterday, I believe it was, or maybe it was Monday, that they're going to take it week-to-week, day-to-day. So, where things stand right now, can Texas still make the college football playoff? Can they still win the Big 12 even without Quinn Ewers for a short period of time. You hope it's shorter rather than longer, but can they do without him and still be able to make those things happen? My answer emphatically, yes, they can. Will they? We'll see. Can they? Absolutely. They have a better roster than every team that they have left to play against. What they have left is BYU, Kansas State, at TCU, at Iowa State. Those could be tricky. Kansas State also, play them in Austin. You're you're glad you're doing that, but that's a a good roster, probably the most losable game, quote-unquote. And then you play Texas Tech to finish the year. The quarterback situation, as it stands right now, I personally would be surprised if it's not Malik Murphy playing in this game against BYU. He said they'll have, they'll have Arch Manning getting a ton of reps. They'll have Malik Murphy getting a ton of reps. I just I feel like you go with the experience here. We'll see what happens. I'm not predicting that, but that's the assumption I'm under right now. Um, everyone else... In this spot for BYU, and this isn't novel, but I think we've got to talk about it, will need to carry a little bit extra without Quinn Ewers. Right? Like, everyone has to be on their P's and Q's when you don't have your number one quarterback in the football game. Because Malik Murphy, as good as I believe he is physically, as highly touted as he was as a recruit, this will still be his first meaningful minutes, rather, for Texas as the starting quarterback. Right? Like it's going to take a second for him to totally get comfortable. So you have to do everything in your power as a Texas football team, offensively and defensively, to make his job easier. Defensively, like I think it's almost as important as what you do offensively. You can't have a situation where you ask Malik Murphy in his start against BYU, if that ends up being the case, to go and chase points. You can't go down 10 0, 14 0 and say, hey, sorry, Malik. Sorry, man, I know, it's, I know it's your first time out here being the starting quarterback, but like, got some problems. Can you help us? Now, I think Malik Murphy, to be clear, is not incapable of coming back from a lead, but you don't want to ask that of your quarterback in this kind of spot. I would also say, when it comes to the offensive side of things, you need to be able to run the ball, right? Like we said that on our one-off video on Monday. I'm telling it to you right now on the live show have to be able to move the line of scrimmage. Now, the good news for Texas, BYU, not great stopping the run, allowing 4.5 yards a carry. But that would do a lot for Malik Murphy from a psyche perspective, from a confidence perspective, from letting the game come to him perspective, if you can move the line of scrimmage for a couple of reasons. The first one being easier picture with the defense. Like it is difficult to be exotic defensively and rock and roll the safeties and lie with your coverages if you're getting gashed in the run game. That's the first part. Other part, more manageable situations. You got a lot more plays in the playbook and a lot more element of mystery if you're living in third and three than if you're living in third and eight, third and nine. So being able to run the ball early is a very big part of this. Like both of those things I was talking about with the defense holding it down and the offense running the football, I really think that's a first half storyline. Like if you can settle Malik Murphy into this football game and get him comfortable, I don't think you have anything pushing the ball downfield that you didn't have with Quinn Ewers. Notice what I did not say. I did not say Malik Murphy is as good as Quinn Ewers. I did not say Malik Murphy should be the starting quarterback for Texas the rest of the way, but they have a ton of confidence in Malik Murphy. They believe that he can make the throws that need to be made. They believe he can push the ball downfield and get the ball to their playmakers. Like You don't have to just radically change your game plan. I don't think we see a brand new Texas offense because Malik Murphy's in the game and not Quinn Ewers. Okay. Now, what I would say is, when it comes to allowing him to throw the football downfield, make sure he's in rhythm. And running the football will make for, one, more rhythm for him, and two, probably make for more sizable passing lanes, you would imagine. Those safeties creep up. Those linebackers get trigger happy. They're tired of getting gashed. Xavier Worthy's open downfield. Tail as old as time. We understand that. So this is the quarterback situation. We, we talked about it before. Like 
I think you have what you need to win this football game and to handle business until you get to whenever Quinn Ewers gets back. And I say that because not, not because of my overwhelming confidence in whoever plays quarterback for Texas without Quinn Ewers. I say that because what we said a second ago, you will have a better roster top to bottom than every single team that you have left on your schedule. If you're playing Bama, whoa, maybe that conversation changes. You play Oklahoma, yeah, maybe that conversation changes because they match up a little bit better from a roster standpoint. But I think the thing with Texas now, we are peeling back yet another layer of that culture onion. We peel back the layer of how do they handle success. You beat Alabama and now everyone's running and gunning for you. You're no longer you know, the underdog when it comes to anything with the college football landscape. How do you handle that? They've handled it well for the most part. Well, now you lose a game to Oklahoma. Can you bounce back? Can you find a way to get it done? They passed that test. Maybe not with an A+, plus, but hey, C's get degrees, baby. Just keep a good thing going. They passed that test after the loss, after the bye week, beat Houston. A little bit dinged up. Now the test is, how do you handle things when you don't have your quarterback in the football game? And this is, to me, now maybe you're saying, well, hey, J.D., that's a, that's a schematic thing. We got to find a way to be versatile. We got to find a way to lean on other parts of our football team. I don't disagree with you, but I think that in itself is a culture question because good football teams, they have a strong base. And what I mean by that is if we don't have one part of our operation operating at maximum efficiency on a certain day, we can lean on another part of our football team. And that's what I think Texas is going to have to do the rest of the way here. And this isn't me downplaying anything with Quinn Ewers. I think if anything, it's just saying championship football teams find a way. Like if you're not able to, without Quinn Ewers, beat a BYU football team or beat Kansas State or, or beat Texas Tech or any of the teams that we've already mentioned. If you're not able to do that without Quinn Ewers, I think it's very fair to have an honest question about, okay, well, what kind of chops does this Texas team really have? And not from a talent perspective. I'm talking about from a championship medal perspective. Because at the end of the day, again, I'm not downplaying the loss of Quinn Ewers. That's, that's huge, huge, very sizable loss. But at the end of the day, championship teams find a way to get it done. And I think baked into that is the culture. So we're having a tremendous stress test here for the Texas culture, not just because they don't have a ton of huge logos left on the schedule to play, but because there's another test now for them in terms of how they respond with the different external circumstance. Losing your quarterback, it's difficult. Nobody wishes it upon anybody. But for Texas now, good teams, I'll say it again, good teams Find a way to respond. And I'll say this too. I think Texas will respond. I think Steve Sarkeesian and this team is battle-tested to a degree based on the time that he's been there and what they've preached internally for a long time. And I'm excited to see how they play. Because I, again, I have confidence in Malik Murphy. I have confidence in the culture to this point at Texas. And I think it's going to be, for Texas, I think it's going to be something where you can look in the mirror too and prove it to yourself what you have culturally. Prove it to yourself, hey, we can lean on the defense. We can lean on the run game a little bit more. We can lean on some of these other skilled players to make plays for our first-time starting quarterback, rather, with Malik Murphy. Good teams find a way. I think Texas will find a way, and we will peel back another layer of that culture onion when it comes to the Longhorns. Bird dogs, y'all have heard me talk about bird dogs a fair amount on this show, and there's a reason for that. One, because they bring you the hard count. Two, because we believe in bird dogs. Like, bird dogs, for a couple of reasons is the way to roll here this fall. We talked about it, what it did for you in the summer. You got the shorts, got the nice liner, moisture wicking fabric. It's, it's got kind of the mesh so you can move around in it. You can go from a workout to a, a tailgate and pretty much wear the same shorts. That's a good deal. Here's the thing now. We're moving in the fall. Crispy season, pumpkin spice season, all that. That's here now. You say, okay, well, JD, it's probably time to hang the bird dogs up for a little bit and, and maybe next summer when, the, when things warm up a little bit, I'll get back on the bird dog run. No, 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 my friend. Bird Dog's got some joggers for you. Everything you love about the shorts, same thing is true with the Bird Dog's joggers and the pants, okay? Breathable fabric, can move around in them, can go for a run and then get back to your eight to, for eight to five if you wanted to wear those kind of khakis that way. Not this stiff kind of cardboard fabric gonna take care of you. Also, they look good. They look good, man. It's not gonna be a thing where you gotta sacrifice function and comfort for style. So, get some Bird Dog's. Redeem code JD at checkout. Get you a nice little hydro flask style water bottle. Perfect for tailgates. Perfect for watching the game at home. Perfect for putting a little bit of coffee in there on your morning drive. Like I'm telling you, Bird Dogs will take care of you. Again, redeem code JD to get you that item at checkout. 
And uh, yeah, man, we appreciate Bird Dogs and appreciate y'all rolling with Bird Dogs, supporting the program. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.